Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 25 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. In this week's show, Dave and I will be talking about AWS has formed a partnership with Girl Code to conduct a countrywide search for female-run small and medium enterprises in the need of cloud computing training. Training. Hi Dave, great to see you and welcome back to another Cloud Computing Training Show. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. It's a great topic. I'm always talking about some uplifting things that are occurring in the cloud computing world in terms of uh, getting people ready for the cloud computing wave, which is already upon us. Uh, this is an instance of that. Absolutely. It's an inspiring part to the training show. I always love the training show because we cover some great topics that I, I really do hope that people appreciate and, and learn from and uh, you know get their careers moving in the right track. So it's always a, always a great show. I thoroughly enjoy this. So do you see programs such as this attracting more females to the cloud computing market? I had better. Uh, I was just doing some research over the weekend. Uh, women will comprise more than 56% of students on campuses nationwide, according to a U.S. Department of Education report uh, some 2.2 million fewer men than women will be enrolled in college this year and uh, it's really has no signs of abating it's moving to 57 percent in 2026 and upward from there so for some reason we're not uh finding a lot of interest in men and under getting you know computer science degrees and we're not graduating as many people who are going to be skilled, you know, to walk into these cloud computing jobs. And, and so if we are not able to recruit and train more women, we're going to be at a crisis more worse off than we are right now. And so as we're graduating more women from college universities, we should be there with flags and, uh, and opportunities and a very clear path uh, for them to get the cloud computing training, because quite frankly, we're running out of the skilled people. So no matter where you sit on this issue, um, it, no matter where you sit politically, uh, this is just a resource issue. This is this is going to allow consulting to survive, enterprises to survive, anybody who's working in the cloud-based systems to survive. Because right now we have, you know, as best I can tell, 10 jobs facing one candidate right now, and that's ridiculous. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you know, having more women into the industry would be fantastic. And, and I think also, if there's some way of leveling the playing field with regards to salaries, because obviously there, t there tends to be in most industry industries uh, quite a large gender pay gap. What are your thoughts on that, Dave? Yeah, I think there is, and there's lots of reasons why that's the case. Um, and we can, you know, leave it to the to the uh, uh, political news shows to kind of argue that point. But ultimately, this is about um, attracting women into the industry any way we can. And if it's paying excessive amounts of money to them and uh, raising salaries, it's going to be what the market demands and they're going to pay it and make it and, and, and make it uh, make it so. I see that uh, in the in the tech field, at least in the area that I'm in, it's always about providing equality in terms of pay um, just because you want to pay people the same amount, no matter what they ask for. I'll give people more and less than what they ask for based on what their their skills their skills are in a particular field, and regardless of what their sex is, of course. And I think that's going to be carried forth in the industry. And computing is really kind of the uh, the great equalizer because we really don't care who you are, how you dress, what you look like. Um, you know, we just want the skills that are able to basically allow us to operate as quickly and as efficiently as we can, and we're going to pay for those skills. And but the reality is we don't have as many skilled people, and I think the uh, the cause the root cause of that is because we're not doing a good job as an industry attracting females into the industry. Whether it's you know cloud computing is kind of the, the next instance of that, but it's going to be other signing objects coming down the way or not. Whether it's machine learning based systems and data scientists and things like that. So programs such as these really do the job of putting up the message to females that are getting into the industry, that they're welcome in the industry. And not only that, we're going to pay to get them trained. And I think that uh, that these these kind of messages that are going out to young women who are trying to figure out a career path are going to send clear message to them that this is something they should really look into. And this is something that should really be a you know, core contender for where they want to spend their, uh, you know, spend the rest of their days and work. And cloud computing is a key area for that because they can make a lot of money. It's very cool and innovative. You know, it's very fun to work with the technology. 
Um, and there's lots of uh, uh, space for them to make a difference. They can actually push forward, be creative and innovative in space that hasn't been around for that long time. So we're pushing for this as an industry. This is something I spend a lot of time doing uh, in trying to recruit females in the industry. And I think this is something that, uh, that we just have to put into. And like I said, no matter what you think about this from a political point of view, um, we're running out of men. So, uh, you know, we got to train some people who are smart and there's not going to be enough men to take the jobs we're looking for. Not that we're, we're just trying to give the jobs to men. But we're trying to give the jobs to the most qualified people. And I think a great deal of those uh, people should be women based on who's coming out of the colleges these days. Yeah, absolutely. I think there is a massive drive for that. Google last year trained one million young people in digital schools across Africa uh, and has already pledged to train another million as well. So I think it's, there's a, dig, a massive digital gap in, uh, in um, Africa that has improved employability and encouraging the entrepreneurship amongst the young people there as well. So if it's anything to go by, our audience on YouTube is I think at 78% women. Uh, from the, the, the global percentage that I've seen on our statistics for our shows, Dave. So, you know, I think there is quite a, a massive interest in tech from uh, what we're doing from the, 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 the female side of our audience anyway. So that's always encouraging. We, we must make sure that we both get our hair done um, and, and look presentable for our shows from now on. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think I'll, I'll leave that to you. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's actually surprising because YouTube is the domain of men. There's probably 70% of men on YouTube. So it's a fact matter of attracting many women. And so that's a good thing. And I think, I think the tide is changing out there. Um, ultimately, we're getting to, I think, the women that this is a legitimate career path for them. They're not going to have roadblocks that are in their way. They're going to be helped and mentored along the way. Um, you know, and they're going to be paid as well as the men in the business. Uh, and, and certainly in the tech field, I can't talk about all the other you know markets that are out there. Um, you, and we got to do it, or else we're just not going to be able to survive. We're not going to be able to accelerate the, the demand for the technology skills that are out there. And so um, you know this is becoming a crisis. And you know I talk about this all the time uh, to some very surprised people because as far as they knew, they thought that we were graduating more men, and there's you know men were getting more technical degrees and things like that. That ain't true anymore. The reality is that, uh, that men are graduating at far fewer rates, not that many are getting into the field, and therefore not that many are getting into cloud computing. And we got to make up the difference with the women, uh, not that we wouldn't do it anyway, but the thing is it's, that's kind of a need that I put in front of the CEOs out there that are picking this stuff. And we don't make this happen in some way, shape, or form, ain't able to maneuver in this way to make this, ha make this occur. Uh, it's going to be pretty uh, hard to start moving your cloud computing agenda forward in the next few years. Yeah, I agree 100%. In fact, I'd like to throw a question to you. Um, why do you think that, that the men aren't coming forward with getting into cloud computing or, or at least uh, starting the academic journey into the, 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 the cloud computing world? Oh, I think they are. We're just not graduating enough men, you know, relative to the, uh, you know, to who's entering the college. And, and if you think about it, um, it used to be men dominated in math and science and college universities. It's not necessarily the case anymore. Men dominated computer science. That's not necessarily the case anymore. So we're graduating fewer men, few, fewer men who have technical skills. Uh, and therefore, they're typically not parlaying those degrees into uh, cloud computing skills. There are those people who can get out of high school and go directly into cloud computing by, you know, um, you know, ad hoc training and equivalency exams and things like that. We do see those from time to time, but it's just a matter of the fact there's not as many men in the workforce in the professional workforce than there was 10 years ago. And whatever reasons, I mean, we, I cite statistics, it's just occurring and we can leave that to smarter people to kind of figure out why that's happening. But as you know, someone who's working, you know, in, providing uh, you know, uh, services to people and need smart people around to make that happen, um, that's a crisis. And so if I'm unable to take that, find those people who are able to bring these solutions to bear, um, then we're not gonna be able to run a business. And I think whether you're an enterprise movie in the cloud computing consulting firm, um, you know, even you know, a recruiting uh, operation, if it's, Worse than people think if we have, you know, very few candidates or, or that, that are being chased by, you know, many jobs. And so we just have to figure out a way to do it. 
I think that, you know, Girl Code is a good example of that. We're going to have hundreds of other things that come in the way. And I think the reality is that the cloud providers, AWS included, as well as Microsoft and uh, Google and Alibaba and, you know, whomever is big in the cloud space, IBM, CA, you know, give away the train. Um, the reality is you need to entice people who are coming out of the college and universities and perhaps provide scholarships. In other words, pay people to go and get trained because I think it's coming to that. Um, and, and a good many of those people should be women uh, who have the degrees that come out of the college and universities. And then basically fill the coffers with the talent you have by providing these very unique incentives because it's gonna pay for itself in the long run. If you're able to pay for training and get people up to speed on AWS, able to pay for training and get up to speed on, on Google or Microsoft, they're gonna go off and work in those with that technology. And by the way, they're gonna probably sell a million dollars of your technology a year as they build solutions in the space. So this is absolutely where people should be spending the dollars. And this is absolutely a crisis right now that if we don't address, this is gonna be a huge deal in 2018 and, and 2019 in 2020, I think 2020, we're doing the show, we'll be talking about how there's a skill crisis out there where the fact we aren't able to move the industry forward because we're lacking the talent out there to make it happen. And the reality is now we have an opportunity, we have a pool of people who are willing to work, um, want to be trained up in the industry, just want to hear the right messages from the right people and provide the right guidance to move in this direction. Let's do it or else we're going to be in trouble. And, and so, Women should be in cloud computing. Uh, there should be any, plenty of opportunities to make it happen. And we're doing that not necessarily because it's a good reason. It certainly is a good reason. We're doing that because of a selfish reason. We need to have the talent to make it happen. And so women, you uh, please come forward, please get trained, and please come work for us. Yes, here, 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 here. And, and okay, so look, uh, one more final question for the show. It would be, if you could name the number one incentive that you feel would pull in more talent or female talent, sorry, into cloud computing, what would that incentive be, Dave, and why? I think the incentive would be, would be culture in the work environment. I think, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a woman, so I can't really, con you know, provide a, we have, we'll have some women guests, we'll ask them as well, but they're looking for a culture that's um, going to provide them with the opportunities to excel. So in other words, just getting initial job and coming to work um, is only part of the part of the issue. They're looking for someone that's going to be able to provide them with direction. They're looking for something that's going to be very woman focused. Um, they're looking for people that are going to accommodate um, what they need in the workplace. Um, so it's not all this you know male boys club thing that they run into. That's the biggest fear they have when they go into cloud computing or any computing for that matter, is they think it's populated. In fact, I was teaching college back in the. Uh, in the 90s and we didn't have any women in the classes and they did a survey to figure out why and the reality is that women didn't want to go into, into uh, um, uh, computing sciences because they uh, thought it was populated by middle-aged uh, old men who, who wore glasses well you know here we are i guess um, but the reality is is that uh, they had a stigma that was attached to it as an industry and i think that stigma is still around today even though it's not as much, there's a lot more women in tech than there were uh, when I got into tech. So they want relative assurances and help to make sure that they're going to have a culture that's going to accommodate their their needs and their desires for working in the working in the uh, in a business. And I think most most companies do that. It's a very different place than it was uh, you know 20 years ago. But we have a long way to go. So in other words, when anybody young who comes into an organization, we should listen to them what their needs and what their desires are and accommodate those needs and desires. Um, you know, whether it's a uh, work at home situation, um, you know, whether, uh, you know, they have a flexible work schedule, they're able to, um, we don't have uh, um, environments that are uh, um, not pleasant to work in. Uh, all those sorts of things need to be addressed. And I don't think we did a good job addressing them in the last 20 years. Well, let's right the wrongs of the last 20 years. I'm a strong believer and advocate for, you know, women in tech. And uh, obviously, from a recruitment point of view, I can't uh, look to be biased with regards to gender. So, but I mean, you know, engaging with women, empowering women in tech, I think is very important. As you said, it's a crisis there with regards to, you know, getting the right people in that are going to be focused, going to be happy and having their needs met in the workplace and not feel that they're, you know, in a, an undermined position being the, the, you know, the opposite gender to male. So I think that's, that's really, really important. Dave, 
what a great training show. Inspiration was always. Thanks for being part of the show, man. You got it, man. Thank you very much. No, thank you. And thanks everyone for watching. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's uh, training show with David and myself. You can get David on Twitter if you've got any questions, which is at David Linthicum. There's also a description box below, which will happily um, invite you to put some questions in there. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're also on LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. So check out our Instagram feed, which is looking pretty cool now. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the future videos. Thanks again for watching, everyone.